Your sister. Me too. Yeah, I miss her. Let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, dear Lord, we are just thankful and we are blessed, dear Lord, that we can come into your house this morning, begin our Sabbath service with Sabbath school. We are just thankful, dear Lord, that you are here with us. We know it already. You said where two or three are gathered, that you promised to be in the midst, dear Lord. And so we know that you're here with us as we get started this morning. We pray, dear Lord, that you would be with those who are still on their way, hasten steps, dear Lord. And um, Father, we pray that the Spirit will go into homes and touch hearts and encourage them to get up and come on out and have a wonderful day in the Lord. Because this is our plan, this is our desire. And we ask, dear Lord, that you lead us and guide us that it may be a blessing to you. We thank you, that Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening song this morning says what? Blessed assurance. Quartet right here. Uh, 
our scripture this morning, let me not forget, comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms 104. That whole Psalms is a beautiful, beautiful Psalms. But um, I just pick one of them because today we're giving thanks in a big way. And I thought I'd use a text that says, speaks to that. And uh, let us read it together. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And God tell you how he wants you to enter into his courts, huh? Yeah. It starts off, that song starts off saying, make a joyful noise to the Lord. You know that part of it? All ye lands. You can be seated. Thank you all very much. Yeah, make a joyful noise to the Lord. It said, all ye lands. Um, we have a beautiful study coming this week, don't we? Oh man, one of the stories that we've been looking at. I saw more in that story than I ever seen through the study, um, well, you know, I was looking at most of it on 3ABN, but I, I saw a lot in this, well, that, that main story that they had. Uh, I like the guy who says, everybody call it the Good Samaritan, but there is no such thing as a Good Samaritan. Hmm? Well, you know, yeah, and, and that's the name. But God said what? There's none good but whoa. Yeah, God is good. But that Samaritan allowed God to enter into him. And carry out his, his, his performance. Beautiful story. Okay, very well. I think Mr. Doug is going to lead us with the, that story this morning. Or with the study this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we, we are always blessed when we can come into the sanctuary of the Lord to fellowship share his, his message of love and mercy and contemplate where we are, what we are, and where we're seeking to get. And so this morning we're going to ask Elder Kip to open our Sabbath school class with prayer today. We don't have the yeah, microphone. Oh, you got a mic somewhere. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. We come here to obtain that Holy Spirit that you have to offer. We pray your blessing be upon each one here, especially the teacher. Guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, this morning we're talking about mission to my neighbor. Um, you know, Brother Elder opened our Sabbath school class this morning talking about the Good Samaritan. And that sparked a thought in my mind. Um, because really, this, it, it, it's a, the way you did that actually begs that to be in case in a sermon. And the reason why I say that is because, yes, Jesus made the statement, he said, there is none good but God. However, it was Jesus that told the story about the Good Samaritan, right? So then why would he then characterize him as good? And you, you know, what I began to think about as you said that, every once in a while in the history of mankind, there appear on the scene of the controversy, somebody who represents the character of God. Mm -hmm. 
And when Jesus told that story, and, and, and of course, yes, coupling it with the, the idea that it, there is none good but God, you were right. The Samaritan allowed himself to be so moved by the Holy Spirit that he forgot himself in terms of his safety, well-being, his journey, his mission, and did what was necessary at the moment. That is exactly what Christ did. Christ put himself completely on the line of destruction to save us. And just in case people think that that wasn't a real sacrifice, they're gravely mistaken. It was possible for the Son of God to fail. It was possible for that to happen. Otherwise, it would not have been a sacrifice. It would have just playing out a role. So then he would not have been able to be a real example to us. If he could not experience what we go through and come to, through that victoriously, then he would be no example to us. So yes, that was a very real threat. So this morning, we're talking about mission to my neighbor. You know, interestingly enough, as, as I think about the, the overall lesson, and then I think about what, what the segment that we're looking at for the week contain, I can't help but reflect on the purpose of it. In other words, what is the point? What, what, is, what is God seeking to get us to realize? So let us read the memory verse for this week, found in Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And it says, and he, y'all could read it with me, by the way. And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. You know, um, I, I'm going to take us back to a story that's not mentioned in this week's lesson. But I want you to contemplate. Where was the very first missionary endeavor encountered? The very first missionary endeavor was encountered where? In heaven. In heaven. You want to take a microphone and just expound on that idea? Here you go, sir. I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. You said it right. You answered <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, after Adam and Eve sinned, and um, God decided that, you know, that he would um, offer them salvation. Or the plan had already been laid to do that. And so Jesus volunteered, said that he will, if man go off in the sin, that he will go off as a redeemer. And after Adam and Eve sinned, Jesus left heaven, come to the earth to um, restore us. Okay. And that's a mission right there. And, and that's basically the mission that he'd given us also on earth to reach out and restore others. Okay. Not going any farther. You did. You, you did a good job on that. But I was looking for something a little bit, you, you said the right, you gave the right answer, but then you changed that to Adam and Eve when you talked about heaven. So let us, let us take a look at this. Where did sin start? Okay. So, so since sin started in heaven, what do we know about God from our experience? We know that God is someone who refused to lose what he created. Okay? So if that's true, then the first missionary endeavor began in heaven with Lucifer. Think about this. So, and, and, and this is important. Because if you want to see who was God's neighbor, it was the individual that stood closest to him. So, because when we think about a neighbor, we think about the guy next door, right? That's generally how we see it. 
according to what we were looking at in, in, our, in that opening statement that you gave, Elder, the neighbor, the Good Samaritan performed a duty that Jesus would later characterize as a neighbor helping a neighbor. But when you think about this, and there are so many ways to look at mission. I, on one occasion, we talked about mission being oftentimes seen as people going out to a foreign field. And then we talked about how right in the Garden of Eden, foreigners appeared. Yes. There was something said that I'd never heard. I ne well, I, I never contemplated, even with the, you know, with the study um, from 3 ABN, they talked about Jesus' mission to, to restore man, but they never thought about, talked about where sin originated in heaven with Satan and all of the things that God did to, 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 try to prevent them from leaving heaven too. Right. That must have been a mission like you said also. Right, it was a mission. That, that had to be the, the, the first mission to restore his angels and everything whom, whom had um, um, forsaken him. Yeah, but I'm gonna take you back a little bit further than that. <laughs> uh -uh. Oh, this gets good. So, we know that because sin originated in heaven, God started that first missionary endeavor, okay? And then we're told that he drew a third part of the angels with him, which mean that now the mission field expanded from just next to the throne of God to the host of heaven. You see a missionary field created right in heaven, but I submit to you that if if the Bible is true when it says, I am the Lord, I do what? C come on, say that again. Say it loud. I change not. In other words, the missionary was always there. Okay, so now let us examine this. And, and you're going to see how this ties into who's your neighbor. So God created the very first of everything somewhere. And from there, he expanded his creative works to encompass more of a universe until it grew right into this creation on earth. Right. But if the fact is that he is the Lord and he changed not, and what he is, he always have been, then what kind of a missionary was God to his creation prior to the fall of Lucifer? Think about the character of God. This character is revealing to his, to his creation something about himself that helps them to, be, to want to become what? More like him. Yeah, please, use a microphone when you make comments so that the people online could hear it. It was his love I'm, I'm for gonna, all. Yes, and uh, Anne Marie in the back is going to need the mic too, yes. That's right. We're, we're going we're gonna to expound on that too, Elder. I was going to say the same thing, but I was saying, going to say that when the Creator decided to create everything, he knew he was going to make us in his image. So that was his will. Yes. Okay, Elder, come on. It was his love. You got to work on that. I don't want to be the only one up here talking, by the way. <laughs> he wished to bring about a relationship with everyone in heaven. Yeah. And that required him showing his true character, which was built, it's built around the Ten Commandments and especially around love for God, but also love for everyone. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to say something on that. You're so right. And, and you, 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 took this, <laughs> you took this way down <laughs> into the Sabbath school lesson. That's good. But listen, the Bible says where there is no sin, there is no what? Huh? 
Where there is no sin, there is no. Please, please give him the mic. See, we got to talk so the people online to hear. Where us. there's no law, there's no sin. So now, but but this, listen. Let me tell you, missionaries, right? What is a missionary? A missionary, as far as we understand it, is an individual who carries a message, right? To a place or to people, more to people than to a place, who does not know whatever it is that the missionary is charged with sharing. Now, you have some missionaries who don't carry the same message. Mi different missionaries carry different messages. It just depends on who the originating body is, okay? But when we think about the fact that God, as, a f as the first missionary, took a message out, and, and since I introduced the idea that he was a missionary prior to even the very fall, means that he was carrying something. But when you mentioned the, the, the commandments, you, you brought that back into to where we are. But before I get to where we are, I want us to be able to, to get an, an, a glimpse, so to speak, of what it is that we're actually called to become. Okay? Because when, when Adam fell, God did something very unique. He did something. God decided to not let this, this, this creation go. He decided to hold on to it. And when he made the decision to hold on to this creation, he had to find a way to reveal himself unlike the way he was able to reveal himself prior to the fall, okay? But God also wanted us to realize that the greatest the greatest gain, in other words, that mankind could have is to actually get back the character that God created him with in the first place. Okay? Okay, go ahead. Give Elder the mic. Brother Teacher, since you had mentioned something there about um, God not wanting to, to lose his creation, you know, when you study the spirit of prophecy, she said when God was creating man and earth and everything else, he was expanding heaven. Yeah. I mean, if you're expanding something, I mean, you're not going to let anything stop you. He, he, he wouldn't allow the devil to be able to stop him from that expansion. Even though the devil threw in a good monkey wrench, that set the plan back for a while, but it, it's not gonna stop God's plan because even though um, earth has become um, sinful to the point that God is gonna have to just annihilate it, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. God is gonna continue his expansion. So. In uh, and, and, and redeeming man, he, he, he is um, continuing his work. Okay. From heaven. Please, the microphone coming. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. You said early in your word that um, every missionary carry a different gospel. I said different How missionaries different right yeah carry different messages but it, be, it depends on who the the um the founding body is or who the, the the um uh when someone sponsors you it depends who, whoever the the sponsoring agency is mm -hmm. they they are supporting a specific message to whoever they're sending and so that's basically what I was getting at, but okay. the elders comment 
kind of got me off of, from track, off of yeah. track. Yeah. Because I'm a little bit confused because I think every message should be the same. He said, go into all the world and preach yeah. the gospel to everyone, every creature, everyone. So when you said earlier about every missionary carry different um, gospel they carry a different what, message or different message yeah. i don't understand that because every message that every human being have carried in the world it should be the same because it's all about christ yes but you have to remember that paul paul in his work made a statement in which he said grievous wolves are going to come in yeah, are you you're a missionary if you're with Christ. But from who? It um, should be it should be the same. It should okay. never be a different gospel. Okay. Because we all are like we're studying together, we're studying about one thing, about Jesus. Yes, but who's sending, and his saving grace so and you, his love. Do you understand that missionaries okay, we're talking about a, a, a missionary mm -hmm. character after the likeness of God. But or, I gotta ask you a question. When you grew up as a child, you went to school, right? You ever got into a confrontation with another ch kid, another child? Of course. You did? I think we all did. Okay, why did you end up in a confrontation? Well, okay. I can't, you know, this No, I'm not trying to explain I, what yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. Because the two of you had a disagreement. That's right. Okay, now, would you say that the other child confrontation with you was uh, just as your confrontation with that child. So in other words, the both of you had a problem and the both of you were going at one another, right? Mm -hmm. Do you really think that Satan decided to just let this controversy go without force? So in other words, God is attacking the kingdom of darkness, but the kingdom of darkness is not going to attack God's kingdom too? I sure it's, it's well. Right. I so sure then if well. God sends out missionaries, and since we know that everything that God does, Satan imita imitate, mm -hmm. he sends out missionaries too. Mm -hmm. They don't all carry the same message. Okay. You're going to need a mic. Yes, they do. And, and, and the, point, the point is that what we are, we are talking about, what we are talking about is God as the first missionary, okay? Because if you, if you are supposed to imitate and to possess that character, you have to understand what it is you're supposed to have. As a matter of fact, I would, I would like to know how, okay, there's, I, I need somebody who I, I never met you before. Okay, can you come here, please? I want to I wanna do something. Please, come. Elder Kip, come. Okay, now, I don't know your name. My name is Del. No, Grace. don't tell me your name. Okay. I don't know you. Okay. Elder Kip, I want to introduce you to um, this sister. But I can't tell you anything about her, and I don't know her name, and I'm introducing you. But before you go over there, you might want to know something about her. Mm -hmm. Now, since I'm the one doing this, you want to ask me something about her? Yes, tell me about her. I can't. Oh. Never met the lady before. Then I've asked the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense? That I should bring you and her up here to introduce you, and I don't know, you don't know me, I can't tell you anything? Now that doesn't make sense. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. That's the point. How in the world are you going to introduce somebody to somebody you don't know? You get it? But this is the point that he just made you have to always pray. Do you pray about Yes, but you like look. Brother, he is, so you know, she has to have a microphone while she talks. Okay, so so listen. Let me let me help us. We, okay, so I, I, this, this is going to take me in a different kind of direction, mm -hmm. okay? So what is, the, what is the purpose of, what is the purpose of what we do in terms of religion? What's the purpose of it? Why are we here? 
What are we seeking to do? Uh, praise and the if Lord. And if you're going to answer that question, you need to raise your hand. Um, the elder, unless you got a microphone. I'm not an elder, but. Okay. I just like to say we're here to learn God's will and to do His will. Now, when we don't do His will, we're doing the will of somebody else. That's okay. It. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Like I, like um, the, the sister was correct that we all should spread the gospel. But in reality, the world we live in, it, with the devil, it doesn't work that way. Um, everybody's going to preach different things uh, for their own agenda. Um, but, you know. Okay. Yes. Wait, Brent, excuse me, Elder. You, no, wait for the microphone. Yes, go ahead, sister. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, the question is asked, why are we here? Uh, Matthew 28 tells us that we are witnesses number one and so it is not just sharing the word um, via speech or outreach but most importantly by our lifestyles the word should transform us and being transformed it should be evident and that was the example that Jesus left while he was here he didn't only share the word by teaching but he lived the word so that others will be impacted and so we the reason for us to be here is so that the light that is within us should shine among men who are in darkness so they too will be you know want to know the light want to be a part of the light want to be changed by the light okay um ella wolf i think he, yeah you got it now okay so please it is interesting yes. that there are different as you had said earlier there are, you have to assess what different groups mm -hmm. are sending out missionaries right and such as seventh day adventists and jehovah's witness right now what is it jehovah's witness has to say about christ was he the son of god or is he a god a God. Mm -hmm. I know what I was about to say before now. I, this whole thing could have been shortened, I believe, had we um, just pull out some names like Kip said and show different messages that that would um, that are being presented to people. Okay, but le le but let me help us with one thing. Okay, For, listen. Think about school. What is school supposed to do? It prepares you for something, right? And I'm, I'm actually a trained teacher besides being a trained preacher. I'm a trained teacher too. And I've discovered that tests are not supposed to just weed out students. It doesn't weed them out. A test is supposed to strengthen your, your learning process so that it, it can help do several things. But for me as a teacher, I always wanted that test to help the student learn, not just make them feel isolated. Yes. Um, while I understand what my, my elder what here says. said earlier, it's more than just sharing information. And that is right. what I tried to allude to earlier. Right. right? We're talking about mission to my neighbor. I can say anything to my neighbor. But what does my lifestyle Show say about what I'm speaking? Right. So it goes beyond what I'm able to share verbatim. It's an example. It, it should be an example that transpire over time. You spoke about being in school, right. um, being an educator. You will have children coming to you with a blank slate. It is your responsibility to guide them. It's not for you to tell them. But as a, an educator, you guide them into the process of learning and using the tools that they have learned over time to now transform them into different individuals that are able to use what is being said to impact or to edify. Okay, that's good. I'm going to work on that. Now, let, let, me, let us get back to this point. Okay. So, the missionary has a responsibility okay and they must understand what they are who they are and what they're supposed to do you know when we when we think about 
how we present the gospel and specifically talk about the controversy. We have a tendency to identify specifically a group that had, as it were, an army formed to combat Protestantism. Okay, that army's mandate was to combat Protestantism. And they have done such a good job until they have infiltrated every aspect of life on earth. They have universities, they're in Protestant churches, they're, they are influencing everything that takes place in the, in the circle of Christianity. That's how good they've infiltrated and, and they also sent, sent out missionaries from the groups that they have infiltrated. They send missionaries out. So this is why it is necessary for us to understand that, that statement that we just heard about an example. What kind of an example are we to be? So we, we were talking about God as a first missionary and the character that he possesses that he is hoping and seeking to instill in us. Okay? And as we just did that little skit, you can't introduce somebody who you are not familiar with. Amen. How are you going to do it? The, the, the interesting thing about the story of the Good Samaritan, since that came up in, into the beginning of our lesson, is the fact that there were three individuals who encountered the wounded person. So, so first of all, let's look at the wounded person. Who, who was he? Jesus never actually said, gave an identity to him. But it is, but it is safe to say that you can, I, you can tell what his original identity was. So anybody want to share with us who, what the identity of the wounded individual was? Okay, so the I'd, I'd like to suggest yeah. that since Samaria was not considered where salvation was coming from, yeah. and we have had a priest mm -hmm. and a Levite yeah. pass by on the other side, right. it sounds like he was an Israelite. Thank you. Now, I'm going to help you on that point. I'm going to make it easier. But you're so right. Because the Bible said he came down from Jerusalem. Okay? He came from Jerusalem. If you come from Antigua, what are you? An Antiguan. So if you come down from Jerusalem, what are you? A An Jew. Israelite, yes. Israelite. That's right. So now, here your bro you are two Forget this business about one or two or three. Two of your brothers come down and see you and walk right past you. And then what happens? The individual who is supposedly by your own devising, your enemy, he comes down and see you. You know, unfortunately though, I'm quite sure that some of you may be aware of some, some stories, whether you heard of that story in a movie or some story somewhere, or you actually heard it in real life, that there are some people who are wounded to death and have only enough strength to tell someone who they don't like, I would rather die than to receive help from you. What that tell you? You see, there are so many different ways to understand the, the, what the Samaritan, okay? To understand the Samaritan, one of the reasons why, again, he was characterized as a good Samaritan is because regardless of how the Israelite felt about him, did not prevent him from performing an act of humanity. Get a mic. I, I, yes, I you need the mic. There are. Un 
unseen guest. I, I, you know, I got started off this morning. I just mentioned that because, you know, I was opening up Sabbath School, and that's the main line story there. But I most certainly didn't intend for you to omit that, that lawyer um, and his questions to Jesus. We're not, we're not done yet. Okay, very well. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we're not done yet. Because, you see, okay, there are, for me, let, let me just say this, and I always say it. For me, the gospel is the most simple thing ever. It is simple. Okay. But we all have a problem, we really do. We are overeducated. We are literally overeducated. Let me tell you why. Okay. If someone, Elder, I want you to ask me the question that I asked the class. Why are you here? Ask me. I... Ask me the question that I asked the class. Why am I here? Oh. Why am I here? No, not you, me. Oh. Ask me. Where are you I, here? Why am I here? I'm here because I want to be saved in heaven with God. You, you got another reason why you come to church? Do you have another reason why you, 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 you seek to keep God's commandments? Do you have another reason? The only reason why I do what God told us to do is because before he even told Adam and Eve about his punishment... He told him about a redeemer. And, Amen. And, and we, we're overeducated. I'm telling you. It is supposed to be simple. Yes. The, the Lord said, unless you become like a little what? Child. Well, how do you explain something to a kid? Um, talking about these highfalutin words and getting all sophisticated with it. This thing's supposed to be simple. And, and I'm sorry. I'm not pointing at anyone particularly. Saints, now, now you said this thing about the lawyer. But let me, let me help you. Wait, wait, Elder. Let me help you. God know that the only way that we are going to end up receiving the character that is necessary for salvation is we have to face issues. Okay? You have to face something. D David the king made a statement in the book of Psalms in which he said, I'm glad that I have trials and tribulations. You know why? Why, why did he say he was glad? She, oh, didn't know. Please. He said, when I am weak, that is when Christ is strong in me. And, and there was something else he said. He said, trouble brings me to where? When you have, seriously, you have a problem and you know you got a problem and it doesn't drive you to your knees. Every problem that we confront brings us to God. That's the point. So now tell me. You really think that the missionary who goes to the, to the field does not con contemplate the loss of his own life? Missionaries don't always come home safe. This is serious business. You could lose your life, say you're going to be a missionary. No, so so when, did, when did the mission field receive a boundary? When did it when did it get a boundary? Here you go. Brother teacher, I don't have to answer that question, but I please everybody don't lose it. Because when I come back to it, there was two things that I, I, I wanted to address was one of them said why I did not go off to Oakwood. I had a GI Bill. Right, but I'm an old a, Vietnam vet. I had a GI Bill. That's an old story. But I, 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 I just choose not to go. I wanted the Lord to use me just as I were. Mm -hmm. Like David, he didn't put on Saul's armor to go fight the giant. He didn't want Saul's armor getting no credit for what he was going to accomplish. And I didn't want the devil, I didn't want 
Oakwood or anybody else getting any credit for what I was going to accomplish for the Lord. I was going to, I was going to surrender myself to the Lord and let him use me to his name, honor, okay. and glory. Okay. And, and there, was, there was one more. He said, I think you wanted to go back to that lawyer, the scribe, to the lawyer who asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved or something like that? Uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. I'll have to answer when I get to it again. Okay. Because you were saying, you was talking before about so many people becoming overeducated, and they, That's right. and, and 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 they, you know, Miss White talks about that in the book. Um, um, the one that she, the, the evangelism. Mm -hmm. hmm? She talks about the different kind of the people that God would rather use than the use those who were so educated until. Rather than leaning on God, they lean on their education, their knowledge. Preachers getting in the pulpit preaching because he can research the scriptures, he can research so well. Mm -hmm. And doesn't have the spirit to deliver before the people. Well, some of them. And, 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 and what, when, if I go into the pulpit, I don't have a piece of paper in my hand. The Lord is going to lead me through the whole entire thing. And I believe I'm going to deliver fairly well. Praise the Lord. Well, yes. I want to get back to the point, okay, because I'm not through. Because it's so important for individual Christian, if you say you're a Christian, you got to lean on the Lord for everything. These eyes that's going bad on me right now, I got to lean on the Lord. Okay. As, much as, the, as much as blind Bartimaeus did. And we, we've, we've got, like you said, we've gotten so educated, we lean on education, our knowledge and everything, rather than leaning on the everlasting arm. Okay, Brother Elder, God bless. So, that, that's a passion, that's a passion statement. Okay, what you just heard. Elder, there's, go ahead. there's one additional thing. Yes. And that is, if someone is able to speak, mm -hmm. The specific language that has been made up, such as lawyer speak, police speak, uh, teacher speak. If you know those specific words and other people don't know, then that makes you more valuable. That's right. And what is it that the Lord wants us to do? He wants us to be humble children. Yep. Okay, she... Um, earlier you alluded to, and I agree, that we complicate things. Mm -hmm. um, salvation or the path to salvation is simple. Yep. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But we're the ones who put legalism and all those intricate things in place, and it prevents, a, it creates a barrier. So we now have to think that we have to work harder to attain salvation but the the word of god tells us that it is not attained by works lest any man should boast yeah. right when we look at the the story of the um good samaritan something came alive in my mind and it is that sometimes we misplace or emphasis mm -hmm. um the persons who were expected to attend to the samaritan the, the um wounded was not the individual who reached him and what is that saying to us as a church? Many times we, we boast about things like we, have the, we are the remnant church and we, we have the gift of prophecy and we have um, good, a good command of the knowledge of scripture and how we articulate such. However, we're missing very valid and important points. We're missing the fact of humanity how to be humans, how to really reach an individual. And that is what the, the story of the Good Samaritan brings out to me this week. Yes. Instead of going and trying to put forth um, the thus say the Lord and all those intricate things, let's approach individuals as humans. Okay. But I want us to focus on something too. No, Ben, hold up, hold up, Elder, hold up, wait. Because now we're, we're hold it, we're, we're, we're getting too close to the end of time. I need to do I something. Just wanted, just Elder, wait. Elder, wait. 
we need to get to a point, okay? We, didn't get, we never got to that part where the, where the guy said to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And it's important. Okay, so first, first and foremost, first and foremost, it is the character of Christ that will win the soul, okay, as an example. But when, think about this. The, the whole point behind the Bible is to be able to teach the, the believer what God wants the believer to know in order to go forward and have a victorious life, okay? Now, when we look at the New Testament, what you are actually witnessing in the New Testament is the missionary journey and the how-tos of the missionary story, okay? Particularly the, that of the, the Apostle Paul. But the question you have to ask yourself is, when I go on the mission field, what am I, what story, what message am I going to carry? And let me tell you, you can't carry a story if you don't have one to carry. That's why the Lord allowed for humanity to encounter other humans going through something and telling them what they went through and how they overcame. Amen. Amen. You understand that? Hold, your, hold your, your hand, sister. Hold it. Because I got to read something. This whole business about being a missionary. Okay, great. So you're going to go and a wounded person is lying on the ground and you know absolutely nothing about first aid. I mean, really? So what does this now tell us about being prepared? Go ahead. I want to say that it all began when someone asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. And when they asked Jesus who my neighbor was, he gave the story of the Good Samaritan right. to let us know that Love your neighbor. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So he explained to him, if you're a neighbor, this is how you're supposed to love them, by helping them. Okay, thank you. So, listen, we come back to the point. First and foremost, you have to be a missionary to whom? Yourself. I don't want anybody to come and tell me how to make a loaf of bread if they never made a loaf of bread. And especially if I plan to bring that loaf of bread to church. Think about it. But it's the same thing about every principle of life. You cannot do for someone what you have not yet proved for yourself. Okay, that was the first prop, the first part of it. Now, the second part of it. Because remember, where there was no sin, there was no law. Not that the law didn't exist, but it had a different form of how it was being lived. In other words, the whole, all of God's creation basically was in agreement and in harmony with God. He did not have to go and take a stone somewhere and write out the Ten Commandments and say to his created beings before, fall, before the fall, this is my law and you're all going to have to do it. He didn't have to do that. Okay, it was in their hearts, it was in their life. But when Jesus said, go do the law and then when you carry this all out, he says, do, do these commandments and you will have life. What was he actually saying? Characterized in every single believer has to be a love for God, a love for others. But, 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 but don't forget this. He said, you must love your neighbor as... Hello? People, listen. Until we come to the place where we realize that we have to take serious how we are living. Don't come to church dressed up and think that you literally see the truth in people. Because you don't know how bad I am all week. You see me look with a suit and a tie. Really? Ask me about my struggle. 
But it is not predicated on us. It is predicated upon Christ. And that's why it is necessary to have that kind of faith that despite you, he can do what? Save you. I want you to hear a statement. This, this statement comes from faith and works. It is unsafe to trust to feelings or impressions. These are unreliable guides. God's law is the only correct standard of holiness. It is by this law that character is to be judged. In an inquirer after salvation were to ask, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The modern teachers of sanctification would answer, only believe that Jesus saves you. But when Christ was asked this question, he said, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And when the questioner replied, thou shalt love the Lord thy, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy neighbor as thyself, Jesus said, thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt, thou shalt live. Now listen to this carefully. True sanctification will be evidenced by a conscientious regard for all the commandments of God, by a careful improvement of every talent, by a circumspect conversation, by revealing it by revealing in every act the meekness of Christ. This, this, this becomes something for every one of us to contemplate. And when we really look at ourselves, I mean seriously, seriously look at you and ask yourself the question, am I a real true representation of Christ? Because without that, all we're doing is like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. We are becoming like sounding brass and tinkling cymbals when what we preach and proclaim is not real in our own lives. And when you begin to experience the joy of salvation, you are going to notice that you are just that, a sounding brass and a tingling symbol. Without Christ. Now, I got 20 minutes, 20 seconds to tell you this. And I share this now became one of my primary themes. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. How do you get it? How do you get it? How do you get born again? Listen, it, it, it's, it's a sim I say this every time I come up here now. It's very simple. Remember this. Anytime something is complicated for you, you're missing something. Simply ask the Lord every morning to give you the new birth experience. And Satan doesn't want you to know that. Because we're told that we are supposed to die how often? Amen. Well, if you die, how are you going to walk around? only if he raises you back up. Ask the Lord every single day. Lord, give me the born again experience. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercies are great. And we thank you, Lord, for this lesson. For all the comments that were made, may they resonate within our hearts to serve you better. Keep us now, we pray, as we move into the next phase of our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. World Mission Report Finding the Perfect School Nusrat greatly admired her grandmother as a nurse and it was her grandmother's unwavering dedication that ignited in her the fervent dream to become a nurse herself. 
But the family's financial resources were scarce, and their meager funds were already channeled into her older sister's pursuit for higher education. For three long years, Nusrat's dream of nursing remained distant. Still, Nusrat talked to her uncle Nardeen. As she confided her dream to him, her uncle listened attentively and suggested that she go to one of the Seventh-day Adventist colleges, which had the most affordable fees. He recounted his own days at Valley View University, the Adventist University in Ghana, where he had been embraced warmly despite not sharing their faith. His beliefs had been respected and there was never any pressure to conform. Nazrat, who had once attended a Christian school as a child and found it wanting, was taken aback by her uncle's recommendation. However, her uncle continued, revealing that by the end of his college journey, he had embraced a life filled with happiness through the church programs. Encouraged by her uncle's uplifting account, Nazrat made a bold decision. Valley View University was too far, but she found and enrolled at the Adventist Nursing and Midwifery Training College in Ghana, embarking on a path that would shape her future in profound ways. Today, Nusrat stands at the cusp of completing her first year of studies and shares how she has found solace in worshiping God on Sabbath. What's more, she attests that she has never felt ostracized for her faith at school. Instead, she's gained a deep understanding of the Bible, expanding her spiritual horizons. Our offerings this quarter will help expand the Adventist Nursing and Midwifery Training College of Ghana. And as we extend our helping hand, we're not just contributing to bricks and mortar, we're building the future of young dreamers like Nusrat. This school, which opened its doors in 2015 to a mere 22 students, now boasts an enrollment of 770 students, with 70% hailing from different faiths. Let's be generous, for our God uses our generosity to transform dreams into reality. Good morning, Sabbath School. We didn't get a chance to take up that mission offering. We need to do that right now. While I talk here for a moment. I, um, I want to go back. I want to thank Elder Doug for leading us this morning in Sabbath School. And I thought he did a very, very fine job. I enjoyed the study myself. Uh, I think everybody learned something. And, and the one thing that, that I learned right off was the fact that um, there is no good Samaritan. You remember the man coming to Jesus and calling him good master? He said, why call me good master? What he said, none good but who? God is only good, right? Now... That Samaritan might have been in a role of God, and um, maybe he could be, but he himself was not good. None of us are good. God is good. Anyway, um, I think I had a little thought here this morning. Are we doing all right with the offering? You know, I was supposed to today that first asked me to present a little message, uh, 10 to 15 minutes long. And um, I, I got to work and I worked on a little message. And um, at the end of the day, they called me and told me that I, I wouldn't be here, that somebody else would be doing that message. And um, so I said, okay, well then. I said, 
I wasn't too big on doing no sermon net anyway. <laughs> Somebody told me that only a Christian net do a sermon net. <laughs> anyway, so I, I took the little message that I had since I was going to stand here in Sabbath school and I pruned it a little bit more and um, I thought I'd use it in Sabbath school talking about Thanksgiving. Um, the subject was the ten lepers um, in Samaria that came to Jesus. I, 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 in the message, I would have talked about leprosy a little bit more and the stigma that was associated with it. Uh, it, it was horrible. There's, I, I, the only thing I could equate was probably be you know, AIDS. I knew you all remember that stigma. There was a time if I'd have said that, everybody would have been going out of the door. But um, leprosy was even worse than that because of the things that it did to the body of the individual before it brought about his demise. Anyway, um, in the ten lepers, you know, they, they, they saw Jesus. They had lost all of their hope. They just knew that they were doomed. But they spot Jesus passing through Samaria. And they all began to cry and raise their hand, Master, Savior, Jesus. They called him every name they could call him until they got his attention. And when Jesus turned and saw that it was calling him, he knew what their problem was. He just told them, go show yourselves to the priests. That means within itself, church, that <clears throat> they were healed. And so they did what Jesus said, and they turned and they started towards, the, you know, where the priest was located to show themselves the Bible said only one of them went and came back. I don't think the others even went all of the way. Once they began being healed, their arms and everything, eyes, face and everything being restored, I think they was thinking about all the things that they had missed. And they began, I hadn't seen my mama. I hadn't been in that restaurant. All the things that they was missing, I think they went on about their business. But the story says that one turned and came back. I wondered what was it that brought that one back. I think he not only realized that he was physically healed, but he realized something else. He was spiritually healed. Jesus had restored him. And that brought him back to the foot of Jesus. Hmm? All the rest of them. But what I'm telling you, it should not come as no surprise because it happens every day. Doctors does not heal. They treat. If you get any healing, it is because God has healed you. Amen. And many of them get up out of their hospital beds and go home and never look to God anymore. They got the healing that they wanted. But when you realize you've been spiritually healed, that changes things all together. Hmm? He went back to say thanks, thanks to Jesus. And I wanted to <clears throat> stand here for just one moment and <clears throat> share with you all the reason why we should say thanks to Jesus. Hmm? Not, not because it's Thanksgiving, but we should say it every day. That's right. It's, it wasn't that time clock that woke you this morning. Some may think that, but it was a touch from on high. 
was in that roof or that put the roof on the top of your head. Hmm, he might have worked laying some, some panels or something, but it was God. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't the police that keeps your kids and family safe. It's Jesus. And it's not the farmer that puts the bread on your table. And that job you go to, the boss man don't like you and you don't like the boss man. Who's keeping you there? It's God who's keeping you there. So we need to give thanks every day. Hmm? That's my sermonette. <laughs> okay, very well. We can close this morning. My piano is always in place. Let us stand and close. Where is our hymn? Somebody knows how to sing that song. Let us pray. Father in heaven, it's a wonderful experience today that will be in your house. We realize, Father, that there's much more to come. We just want to thank you for being in our midst, uh, for uh, blessing us with your word this morning. We pray that, Father, that you continue to watch over us. Um, the things that we've learned in Sabbath school there, Lord, we, we talked about mission. Help us become more mission-minded. You know, Ms. White tells us that this church has been designed for mission. And Lord, we pray that we support mission. As somebody was talking about, you know, the things that can happen to you in foreign lands. We don't have to go there, Lord. 
but we can send some funds and many times that can do a little bit greater work than we. And we just want to thank you and praise you for the privilege of being a part of this, this movement. Pray there, Lord, that you guide all of our hearts. And those that are on the way there, Lord, still hasten their steps there, Lord. And may we have a blessed day in the Lord. This is what we come here for this morning. We thank you. We praise you. And ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we just be dismissed for a little while and, you know, the restrooms is outside the door to the right and do all the things that we need to do and let's come back and praise the Lord together. Okay? Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>